Can Marcus Willis defeat Roger Federer today? Well, of course he can. I mean, we've got to believe what he's already done in winning seven matches to be at this point is quite remarkable. Uh, I want to talk about the left-handed effect. So when you look at Roger's career, the player that he's struggled with the most is Rafael Nadal, who's left-handed. He's able to drag the ball out to the backhand. I remember reading in Rafa's book, it's like, you serve to the backhand again and again. You serve there all the time. And I think Rafa's going to be a, a better style of player to get it high to the backhand. But certainly Marcus, being a left-hander, can also try and really exploit that side of Roger. Uh, also in the first round, Guido Paya was a left-handed player. So you could say that helps Roger because he's had a, a little bit of a dress rehearsal there. But I think it also helps Marcus. When you're scouting an opponent, particularly the match right before, you want to see patterns of play that you can employ. And there's certain patterns in there that Guido did very well with, but there's also certain patterns that Roger did well with. So we're going to look at eight points of Roger, break down and understand what he does so well, so that when we watch the match against Marcus this afternoon, we have a little bit of a better understanding of what we're looking for. So we're going to do some analysis of uh, Roger's game here. And the first point is looking at the Federer forehand. I mean, he just absolutely loves going after that forehand. Now, he looks like he's off balance, but it's very good core position. Against a right-hander, a lot of times this will build through the juice court, but against the left-hander, the forehand is over here, and this is wide open, and this is what Federer is going to do. He's, he's pulled the opponent over to that right side, and the winner is through the ad court. So there'll be a little bit of that happening today as well. One of Federer's favorite serve patterns is the out wide serve in the juice court. He wants to pull the opponent way off the court, and the reason for that is to open up a hole. So a lot of times when you're seeing winners being hit on a court, it's the opening of the hole, it's the shot before that really does the job. So Federer is going to hit two shots here, a really good uh, out wide serve, through the juice court and the winner through the ad, it was the serve there that did most of the damage. I have a play I talk about a lot, a lot is the serve plus one. And this is, a, I learned it from Roger Federer, it's a really big part of his game. So he's hit the serve, he's looked for a forehand, that return of serve came back and was trying to get to the Federer backhand. What Roger does so well is he runs around it. And from here, he can dictate to any part of the court. Marcus has got to stop Roger hitting forehand standing in the ad court today because Roger can dictate and here he finds his way to the net. In the opening round, Marcus came to the net successfully. He had a very good win percentage and he will be approaching to the Federer backhand. But Roger's got a very good passing shot and here there's options. We've got down the line, which typically will have to be a more spectacular shot. We've also got cross court. So Marcus is going to have to cover both. On this occasion, it's more of a blocking pass from Roger to go down the line. That ball there just didn't quite do enough to make Roger uncomfortable. Sometimes we want to approach to the forehand as well. We think that's open. So Marcus is probably going to find himself in this situation at some stage of the match today. Marcus is going to look over to the juice court and see it's pretty wide open. It's danger over there. By the time the ball reaches that part of the court, it's only two steps for Roger. If it takes a second to go uh, through the juice court, it's only going to take uh, Roger a second to run over there and get it. This ball here is better off going down the line as the approach, but we see here he falls for the illusion of the open court. Roger's over there, and we've got the passing shot down the line. So most approaches today have got to put Roger under immense pressure hitting a backhand passing shot. Roger's stepping in, controlling from the middle of the court. He's in full control here. He should win this point. Nice little block backhand. Now we see, and he gives it away early. So we see the uh, court position down the other side. Guido really hasn't picked up that this is going to be a drop shot. And we look at the feet there. He hasn't taken that step forward. But the eyes have got to be on the wrist and the racket, and the ball, and in, in the preparation there. Everything right now shows drop shot with that racket laying back. It clips the net. It's a little bit of showtime there from Roger. Most drop shots are hit from the backhand wing 
down the line, but he doesn't mind hitting this, hits the net, he says, yeah, sorry, mate, a uh, bit of a lucky one there. Next point, the serving from Marcus has got to be better to the back end. If Roger can step inside the baseline and hit that backhand return, he's going to want to find Marcus's backhand immediately. So this is something that I expect to see a lot of today. Roger's very smart. He realizes Guido was under pressure there and sneaks into the net. Like that high volley. Keeps the racket head up there. Slicing return. Just trying to nullify the point. A little bit of defense then from Roger. Down the middle, there's nothing on. And there again, there's that runaround forehand. This is, I think, from Roger, the thing that he's going to look to do the most. He wants to be standing in the ad court hitting forehands. From here, he can dictate heavy to the side tee. He can dictate deep through the court. He's got down the line. He's got every option open. When Roger Federer is at his best, this is the part of the court that he loves to be in. Wide in the ad court, hitting forehands. So these are the things that we're going to look for today. These are the elements that Marcus has got to try and stop from Roger. Roger's going to be looking for a lot of forehands. And it's that, you know, as a lefty, we call it like a crafty lefty or a dirty lefty. And that's a compliment uh, to all lefties, uh, including myself. He's got to bring that heavy slice and really put Roger under pressure hitting backhands. Intriguing stuff, Craig. One quick question. Although he didn't win and he didn't manage to get a set, Guido Payer did take Federer to two tie breaks. We yes. got something right in that match. Yes. What, what did he get right? Yeah, I think, I think there's a little bit of Guido played his normal kind of game. I don't think Roger's back to being Roger. I think he was a little bit off. This was a, 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 one of those matches where he's feeling his way into the tournament. And I think Roger was, you know, I would, maybe it's his B game. Maybe it's his B plus game. But it certainly wasn't his A game. So Guido came, he played well. Uh, he, he got to the net a little bit. He pressures the backhand. He held serve. Roger's not back to the top of his game. So if ever Marcus wants to play him, this is the right time to do it. Do it early. As each match progresses in this tournament, you know, if, if, if Roger gets through this one, I expect him to play better and better. Roger Federer doesn't do an awful lot wrong or yes. badly. Yes. Um, but like a lot of other right-handed players, he's very good moving around his backhand and yes. playing that forehand from the backhand side of the court. Yes. Why? Is he so much better from that side of the court instead of the right side of the court? Yeah, it's, uh, it, I, I did a lot of analysis with the Dartfish software in, in the past 10 years. And I learned this from studying Rafa and I learned it from studying Roger. So let's start with Rafa who does it the most. When Rafa hits a serve and, and uh, when the ball comes back, his first shot after the serve is a forehand. He's basically hitting eight out of 10 forehands. He's doing everything he can to avoid hitting a backhand. And the reason is the forehand is a bigger weapon. And we talked yesterday about the forehand. You know, the, the perfect analogy is the forehand is your sword and the backhand is your shield. So when you run around, you've, when you've got time to run around a backhand and upgrade to a forehand, you're hitting a bigger weapon. In general, it's about eight miles an hour faster. From the back of the court, around 75% of ground stroke winners are with the forehand side and about 25% with the backhand side. So from an analyzing Roger and Rafa, what I began to see was that when they're standing in the normal court, so for Roger, uh, that's in the juice court hitting forehands. He's very, very good there with the forehand. But when he runs around it, he produces more winners and he has less errors from over there. So the reason that happens is if it's a normal backhand or a neutral backhand, it's pretty much got to go cross court and the opponent has anticipation with that. When he runs around it, there's no anticipation anymore. The opponent's split stepping and they're not leaning one way or another. So it robs them of precious tenths of seconds to get that ball. He hits a bigger shot from the other side of the court and he can run that secondary pattern down the line. So for, for most players on tour, the run around forehand is a much more potent weapon than the normal forehand. 